Before I was a full-time Linux user, I was very familiar with the DOS file system hierarchy. If you're coming from Windows, you probably know how it works. I mean, you have a drive, that drive is assigned a letter, and then uh, things get installed into directories on that drive. So your operating system was probably installed to C colon slash Windows, and programs are generally installed to C colon slash program files. There might be some other fancy setup you have, but generally that's how it shakes out in the end. On Linux, things are a mite bit different. Uh, and truthfully, the Linux file system is laid out in a way that was so foreign to me at first that my first attempt at using Linux as my daily driver on Fedora was actually a miserable failure. But I kept at it, and I found resources that helped me grok uh, the, the differences between Linux and Windows and how it uses its directories in the system uh, to, to store the programs and applications and, and all the other things that you might need to do on your computer. So that's what I'm going to try and do with this video. This is understanding the Linux file system. So let's take a look at the actual file system. If we uh, go up here to activities and on, on other systems it might be a little different, and we click on files, we can see that it brings up our home directory, right? Now what we actually want to do is view the uh, root directory. So we can click on other locations and click on computer. And here you can see we are at the root directory. Now, what is the root directory? Well, if you can think of the root directory as the roots of a tree, it's where the tree gets it gets its start, basically. Uh, so if we hit control L on the keyboard, we can see the path name. Now, on Windows, this would be equivalent, roughly equivalent to C colon slash. But on Linux, it's just a forward slash. And uh, so this is our computer. This is where all of everything exists in Linux, um, even your other drives. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So first up, we have slash bin. And slash bin is where all of the binary files uh, for your computer exist. Now, your binary files are going to be roughly equivalent to .exe files. These are, these are basically programs on your computer. If you're familiar with the Linux terminal, we have a lot of the applications that you would run uh, in the terminal here. We have cat. If we scroll all the way down, we have a tool that lets you unzip files with, uh, where is it, zip right there. And there's even an application like SSH in here. And, and that's the bin folder. Now, if we go back, we can actually see we have another directory called boot. This directory contains everything that your computer needs to actually successfully boot into Linux. Um, this is somewhat of an advanced area. Uh, I would recommend not being in there <laughs> for new users anyway. Uh, so let's go into dev. This is slash dev. Now we can see here that this is, uh, that there's just a bunch of files in here. What are these files? Well, this directory basically contains all of the hardware of your machine. Now, you might be wondering how could the file system contain all of the hardware? Well, these are, these are virtual representations of the hardware. Anytime you need to send or receive information from uh, the hardware in your computer, well, this is where you're going to do it. Now, none of these files are actually written to disk. These are all uh, going to be virtual files that aren't actually there. But, it, it works as if it was a file. Now, if you were to open this up in your terminal, you'd be able to interact with some of this stuff. Linux has a couple of directories that are like this, where it's filled with virtual files. Uh, like, if you go into disk here, you can see that all of the disks in this system are actually uh, shown here. Uh, you can actually see NVMe uh, partition 3 and partition 1 and so on. Um, they're all represented here. You can see them by ID, by label. Uh, you can see them by part label. And the path through this dev directory to that device is what you'd actually use to mount the device to another path. We'll talk about mounting a little bit later. But suffice it to say, that is another uh, somewhat of an advanced area of the file system. You don't, you don't need to be there if you're a new user. Uh, now, etc. here, or etc, is where you might actually start taking interest. This is where your applications store much of their configuration data on a system-wide level. Um, and we'll talk about where a user-defined stuff goes later. But in here, you're going to find a couple of interesting things. The, fir the first thing that I find most interesting here is the file system table. Uh, and, you know, this looks like a bunch of gibberish. If you're not familiar, it might be somewhat intimidating. But this is 
uh, how your computer knows what partitions to set up and where to put them. Another interesting file here is hosts. Uh, you can see that uh, if we have popos.localdomain, uh, and uh, if I were to type this into my web browser, I, it would actually be redirected back to this machine. Uh, but I could do something like uh, 192.168.1.2, which is the IP address of my home server. And then I could type in something like cloud.heavyelement.io. And then if I were to save this, which I can't save it now because I don't have uh, root privileges. And then I were to go over to my web browser. My web browser would actually look at this file and say, ah, I should actually go to this IP address rather than looking up a DNS request. And for your local machine, you can map any domain name uh, to any IP address you want using the host file. So that's an interesting thing. You can't save it because you don't have permission. Now on this demo machine, uh, I'm actually running Pop OS, and you can see here apt. On Ubuntu, on Ubuntu derivatives, on Debian derivatives, apt is going to be your uh, your package manager, then you can actually come in here and you'll be able to uh, edit these files here th to just change where your uh, software is coming from. You can add new software to it. It's pretty cool. And this directory has a ton of other configuration data for the apps and services you have running on your machine. Next up, we have games. This is a directory that I added here. Yeah, you're probably not going to have that. Uh, next up, we have home. Uh, you can see here that we have uh, a couple of different users here. So you can see I'm logged in as G Bryant. I, ha I have a little home icon there. I'm actually not able to access uh, my cousin or, or Abby's files here. If I double click on this, you can see that this is my home directory. And you know, there's like, uh, you know, downloads and documents, desktop, public, uh, templates, videos, music, pictures, all that kind of stuff. It looks rather straightforward. It looks pretty similar to what you would find on Windows, right? Uh, but the difference is going to be when you hit Control H. Uh, and you can actually see that there's config, uh, local, Mozilla, wine, var, steam, SSH. These are all going to be uh, where your local configuration data for your applications is going to be stored. So this is your, uh, this is a per user uh, directory. It's your home directories. I don't want to go too deep into the home directory because there's a lot that we could talk about here. So I'll probably end up saving that for another video. Let me know what you think about that idea. Next up, we have lib, lib32, lib64, and libx32. All of these directories are going to be libraries that are shared uh, between applications you have installed on the machine. Um, not a whole lot to talk about in these directories. Uh, basically, you never have to do anything with these as your package manager will actually uh, handle all of that for you. Um, so let's move on. Lost and found. Can't You don't have access to that. It's, it's an operating system directory. Uh, slash media is interesting because this is where uh, if you were to insert like a USB uh, mass storage device, it would actually be mounted here. So if I were to grab a mass storage device like this uh, USB stick and I were to plug it in, you can see that there it is, 64 gigabyte disk. Um, and it shows up over here as well. And you might be thinking, wouldn't it just be easier if it was lettered drives? Well, no. Uh, one of the nice things about this is if you know how Linux works and you know the name of the disk, you're going to know every time when you mount that disk, when you plug it in, it's going to show up in that directory. Uh, that's just one of the advantages. Consistency, simplicity, it's awesome. Uh, you can actually see I have some files on here. This is my grandparents. Let's go back to media. So where media is where your system mounts uh, file systems that you add to the computer, slash MNT is where you can mount your own files manually. Now, I just want to say you don't have to mount things here. Like if you have a disk and you want to mount it somewhere, any random place on your file system, you can pretty much do whatever you want like that. This, but slash MNT is a nice, convenient, consistent place to do it. It's a, it's usually empty. You don't normally store things here. So slash uh, MNT is a great place to put uh, other disks that you might want to mount. Uh, now, I will say that on my other computer over here, I have uh, my home directory on the SSD that the operating system's installed on, but I also have a 10 terabyte hard drive installed in that machine, and it's mounted at my home directory's video folder. 
if I go to slash home slash G Bryant on that machine, everything in there is on the SSD except for the files that are on in the video directory, which are on a separate 10 terabyte drive. I think that's really cool. <laughs> So traditionally, if you wanted to install applications on Windows, you'd have to go find an EXE or an MSI from some random website and run through the setup wizard. On, on Linux, you generally get your software from the package manager, which it all that comes from your system maintainer, the people who made the operating system you're using. This is infinitely more secure than the Windows way of downloading random executables, but what happens if the software that you want is not actually available in the system's package manager? You're totally able to download software through your web browser uh, and install it. Uh, and when you do, more often than not, it's going to be installed in slash opt or slash OPT. Now you can see in here, I have Minecraft installed. So this is where you'd find all of the Minecraft stuff. On my other computer, I have Discord and Library, and it wouldn't be 2020 without Zoom. Um, so all of those would actually get installed here. And all of those I downloaded from the developer's website and installed it on this machine. All right, let's look at slash proc now. Slash proc is much like slash dev in that it's going to have uh, a virtual representation of all of the processes that are running on your system. Uh, what do I mean by processes? Well, basically all the running uh, applications that you have right now uh, are going to be represented here as directories and uh, you have some other uh, miscellaneous stuff here. Now, this is another ad more advanced location on your file system. You're not actually gonna have to interact with this much unless you're gonna do like programming or development on your, on your system. Uh, so yeah, let's move on. Slash recovery, that is uh, a, a pop OS thing, I believe. That's not uh, on anything I've ever seen. But slash root is a directory uh, for your root user. The root user is basically God of a Linux system. It has absolute control and it has unfettered access to everywhere and everything on your machine. So the root directory is basically the home directory of your uh, root user. Uh, I know it's a little confusing. I know it, it's, you would think it would probably belong in uh, home, but uh, no, it lives here. When it comes to the Linux file system, slash run is a bit of a newcomer here. Uh, this is going to be a lot of like runtime stuff, like the, the files that your computer needs uh, to boot up properly. When your computer is rebooted, this gets all cleared out. And that's another like more advanced location. Sbin here is uh, a place for system binaries. So the binaries, of the applications that you need as a root user are going to be in here. Slash SRV is an interesting location. On most systems, this is gonna be empty, but if you have like an FTP daemon running and you allow people to connect in and upload files or download files, you're gonna get them saved in the SRV directory. Also, if you have web server applications running like Apache or Nginx, they could be set up to have the web files in this directory. Here, I'm using it as a mount point for my remote server, um, where I have uh, much of my web development stuff in here. It's kind of a mess. <laughs> I use SRV as sort of a catch-all for uh, network content. Slash sys is a directory that allows you to interact with uh, your Linux kernel. Uh, this is another virtual uh, file system much like dev. Again, this is more for advanced users. Uh, so we'll go on to the next one. Slash temp is uh, another interesting directory for newbies. This is where uh, applications are gonna write scratch and temporary data. So if you uh, open up in Firefox a file, if you go to download it and you don't click save, if you just have it open, it will generally save it in this directory. And then when the computer reboots, it's gone. Um, and yeah, like I said, this gets cleared after every reboot, and that's basically it for this directory. Uh, next up, we have slash USR, which stands for Unix System Resource, and uh, this is another interesting directory. When you install applications that you as a user run um, in, in like graphical mode, they tend to be installed in this place, uh, in any of these directories, bin uh, slash uh, local slash bin. If they're really, if they're large games, they tend to be installed in share. Uh, so slash user slash share. And also you're going to have a lot of uh, your 
library files actually be installed into any of these directories here. And the last directory on our list is slash var. Now, slash var is where you you write files that you believe are going to grow, uh, continue to grow as the system uh, continues to be used. So you're going to have things like uh, your mail uh, inbox. Um, you're going to have things like uh, your print spool is going to be in here. Cups is your print spool. You're going to have things like temp. There's another temp directory in there. You're going to have things like... Uh, Databases. If you install a database, you'll have crash logs in here and in crash and you're going to have logs in here. So you can actually come in here and check the logs to see if uh, something went wrong. Let's see. Do we have anything wrong with our authorization? There was a problem with the Microsoft Comfort Mouse. <laughs> You're also going to have web content in here if you have like Apache installed. Uh, it'll be var www. And that's where you'll have like your, your uh, default virtual host files installed. Um, you can go in there and change them as well. Well, that's the root of the Linux file system. Uh, I can hear some folks asking, wouldn't it just be easier if applications got installed like they are on Windows? And I honestly don't think that that would be the case. I don't think that would be true. Like, you want all your libraries installed in a single location. If you were to open up your program files, open up just any random application that's installed on Windows, count the number of DLLs in there, uh, and do a search and see how many times that specific DLL is replicated across your machine. It's kind of crazy. On Linux, the, you know, having your shared libraries all in one spot, having your binaries in, all in another spot, having your configuration files all in another spot, it allows for a more consistent and efficient system. Uh, it allows applications to share resources more uh, fluidly. It might seem a little confusing, but once you get to know the lay of the land, it really starts to feel like home. And as we all know, there really is no place like slash home. With that pun, I think it's time to end this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to my friends over on Patreon who make what I do here possible. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And if you believe in the work that I'm doing here, if I've helped you in any way, consider supporting the show over on Patreon. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube. Uh, but no matter what you do, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to see more from me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day.